coming up tonight on the News at 6. Hundreds of thousands of federal dollars could be headed to the Lewis and Clark County Detention Center. What that money would be used for. Plus, there are many students that without financial aid, it wouldn't be possible for them to attend school. How each dollar donated to a Helena College scholarship program tomorrow will go further than ever before. From Montana's news leader, this is MTN News at 6. Good evening. Welcome to the News at 6. I'm Marian Davidson. Thanks for joining us. A composite of state and locally reported data shows Montana's COVID-19 case total is nearing 63,000. More than 15,000 of those are active cases. 15 more deaths have been reported since Sunday, bringing Montana's COVID-19 death total to 707. MTN is using a combination of sources to deliver the most accurate count on cases each day. Local county health departments might be alerted to cases before Montana DPHHS. So using that local data means there will be times when MTN data does not align with the state report. And today, the Bullock administration said it will be scaling back COVID-19 relief reimbursement for local governments in Montana. The administration originally allocated $300 million of federal aid to help cities and counties with pandemic-related expenses. But now that is being reduced to about $200 million. Governor Steve Bullock's office said local governments will still be, quote, made whole for new COVID-19 expenses through December 31st, like overtime pay and additional staff needed to respond to the health crisis. But it says items that had already been budgeted will not be reimbursed. Bullock says the money not spent on local governments will go toward grants to help small businesses and enhanced unemployment benefits. Local governments have been submitting requests for reimbursements for costs since this summer. The new requirements apply to expenses incurred after October 31st. And as Congress comes back into session this week in Washington, it remains unclear whether lawmakers can agree on another bill offering pandemic-related relief for businesses or individuals. Both of Montana's U.S. Senators, Republican Steve Daines and Democrat John Tester, told MTN News they do want to see a bill passed. Daines said he introduced several bipartisan bills, including ones that would forgive prior loans to small businesses or offer relief to businesses with fewer than 50 employees. He says he wants to see them passed or incorporated into a larger bill. His office also said Democratic leaders in Congress have rejected earlier efforts to compromise. Tester said a bill should be targeted at specific needs such as health care costs, the hospitality industry, the unemployed, and schools and colleges. Tester wrote a letter to Senate leadership saying it is time to stop assessing blame and get a bill passed. He told MTN News that negative effects from the pandemic are getting worse and that a substantial aid package is needed now. If we could get a bill out that have a trillion and a quarter, tr between a trillion and a quarter and a trillion and three quarters in it that's very, very targeted, I think it would do a lot of good for the economy. If we want to let these businesses fall through the cracks, if we want to let local governments default, I think that's really, really bad practice and it isn't good for, for our long-term economic health. Tester also said he believes that President-elect Joe Biden is supportive of a COVID relief package. All right, now it's time for First Weather with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Gravenitz. Good evening, Curtis. Well, good evening, Mary. Good evening, everybody. It's the final day, final night of November, the final night of meteorological fall. Meteorological winter begins tomorrow, December 1st. And we've got a little winter weather, just a little winter weather to talk about. Uh, this uh, winter weather advisory, I know it looks like it's covering a lot of areas, including Great Falls, including Helena. It does not include Great Falls proper. It also does not include uh, Helena or the Helena Valley. Talking um, McDonald Pass and Rogers Pass and Lincoln and out here around Rainsford and Kings Hill Pass and the Rocky Mountain Fronts is where this winter weather advisory has been issued for. We do have a little wintry weather coming through. Boy, the wind is howling out out there as well and we've got a little light snow some December dendrites here dendrite fancy word for a snowflake here after that though it's wall-to-wall -wall sunshine we may have to wait a while maybe mid-month for more snow more of the full forecast in just a little bit 
Thanks for that, Curtis. A $600,000 federal grant is on the table for Lewis and Clark County commissioners tomorrow. Now, the funding is for expanding substance abuse treatment for inmates in the county detention center. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian tells us what this additional money could pay for. County leaders say as many as half of the people in the detention center may be dealing with substance use disorders. They say providing medication-assisted treatment, or MAT, within the jail could be a key step to keeping some of those people from reoffending. On Tuesday morning, the Lewis and Clark County Commission will vote on whether to accept $200,000 a year for three years from the U.S. Justice Department for the MAT Bridges Project. It would pay to provide inmates with medications that are used to help reduce cravings for opioids. The grant would also fund a contracted addiction specialist and case manager to work with inmates. Since last year, the county has been partnering with Peerview Health Center and the Helena Indian Alliance to connect people with peer support and treatment resources as they leave the jail. What we were missing was the ability to actually provide MAT in the detention center. Leaders say starting treatment while people are still in jail could lead to better outcomes. It doesn't just help the individual that has the addiction, it helps the whole community because it stops that involvement in the criminal justice system and it helps keep the community safe. While the medication would be the biggest addition, leaders say it will have to be just part of a larger effort. It's not just about the medication, but it's the talk therapy, the group therapy, everything that goes along with, with the medication. If the county accepts the grant, they'll have to put some additional security measures in place at the jail. Leaders say they could have the program up and running within four weeks. In Helena, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN News. Due to COVID-19, the Helena Symphony canceled their Christmas in the Cathedral concert. It was scheduled for Monday, December 7th. Maestro Alan R. Scott said with the increase in cases and the amount of asymptomatic spread in the community, the risks were too great. The Helena Symphony worked closely with Lewis and Clark Public Health to put on digital concerts during the pandemic, and the plan is to return to digital concerts in January, and if the vaccine rollout goes well, have a blowout symphony under the stars in July. Scott says the pandemic has been a financial strain on the organization, but they have also seen just how important their music is to people right now. We are seeing the impact. Um, psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, the people are telling us that our music making is having in their lives. Um, financially, this does put a burden on the organization because we're not selling tickets. We are giving this all away um, to the community on YouTube. A donor agreed to match every donation to the Helena Symphony up to $20,000 raised through December 20th. For more information about how to support the organization, check out our website, ktvh.com. And still ahead on the News at 6, how your gift giving tomorrow can help provide scholarships for higher education at Helena College. Hannah's News Leader, you're watching MTN News at 6. Welcome back to the News at 6. Tomorrow is Giving Tuesday, and this year, each dollar donated to the Helena College Access Scholarship Program will go four times as far. MTN's John Riley met with college officials who say scholarship opportunities like this can change lives. The Helena College Foundation will be matching up to $13,000 in funds raised for scholarships during Giving Tuesday. With matching funds from the state, the college has the potential of lessening the financial burden of more than 50 students through access scholarships. What that's going to mean for our students is every dollar that's raised on that day will actually go turn into $4 in the hands of students um, because we'll be able to combine the foundation's match program with the state of Montana's match. So it, it's very impactful. Helena College Access Scholarships provide up to $1,000 for full-time students. A $250 donation on Giving Tuesday will help a student for an entire school year. The scholarships are distributed based on need. There are many students that without financial aid, it wouldn't be possible for them to attend school. In addition to the costs that are paid directly to the school, tuition and fees, they also have living expenses, right, that must continue to be covered while they're students. And so this scholarship can also go towards covering those expenses while they're students. A degree can have a big impact on a person's life. For example, the median income for a two-year nursing graduate from Helena College is around $51,000, and a network administration grad can make around $47,000. Access to higher education can change the lives of students and their families. 
One of the missions at Helena College is to provide quality education at an affordable cost. Reporting in Helena, John Riley, MTN News. Head over to our website, ktvh.com, for information about how to give to the scholarship program, plus spring semester and financial aid registration information. And now with a look at the weather again, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenitz. One of my friends, after watching the 5 o'clock news and seeing the seven-day forecast with all the sunshine, said, don't worry, Curtis, it will snow again, it will snow again. It better snow again here. Uh, high pressure will dominate our weather, really, after this little disturbance goes through tonight, all the way through the rest of this week, this weekend, all the way into next week. It may not be until the following Thursday that we see a return to more typical weather here for December. I'll have more of the forecast and weather-wise. It's coming up right after this. Now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenitz. All right, well, welcome back. Winter is coming. COVID is still here. The winter months can be long, dark, cold and boring for some, but in this week's weather-wise, Montana offers many fun things to do outside that are good for your physical and mental health. Winter in Montana can be brutal, but in between severe weather events, there are countless outdoor activities and opportunities. Fresh air, sunlight, and physical activity are important for your physical and mental health. Another winter with COVID means many of our normal physical indoor activities have been canceled or seriously limited. Most outdoor activities during winter embody social distancing. So here are a few activities you can give a try. When is the last time you built a snowman, snow fort, or had a snowball fight? Families can go on winter photo scavenger hunts. Hold a bonfire in the yard and go sledding. Host a snow sculpture competition. Ice fishing can be beautiful and rewarding. Recently, the ice skating conditions have been fantastic, so go lace them up. A friendly game of pond hockey is a real workout. The next time it snows, go shovel for someone in need. Heck, the kids can even make a few bucks doing it for the neighbors. Of course, one of my favorite activities, skiing. Our local ski areas, Great Divide, Showdown, Teton Pass, and Bear Paw have excellent beginner and children rentals and programs. There are miles and miles of trails that are groomed for cross-country skiing, or you could take the skinny skis out to the golf course. Speaking of golfing, when there isn't snow on the ground, a lot of the courses will stay open. Snowshoeing or simply taking a hike can be a great exercise. And don't forget those motorized activities. But even just a walk with the dog and family around your local park can be fun for everyone while simultaneously staying safe and healthy. The benefits of fresh air and exercise far outweigh the effort of bundling up the kids in snowsuits, boots, hats, and gloves. So dress warmly, head outdoors, and now you're a little more weather wise here. All right. Uh, well, hope you had a good weekend. Pretty nice weekend to be outside with a lot of sunshine, a little windy in some areas. And we do have a little snow event that will be coming through tonight into tomorrow. After that, unbelievable weather for December as far as just the temperatures go and consecutive days of sunshine. Great Falls, 37 degrees, southwest winds, 20 miles per hour, and boy, did it get windy in Helena uh, through this afternoon and this evening. We've got gusts of 30 miles an hour in the capital with temperatures. Uh, doesn't feel that warm, 39 degrees. Uh, there you can see the numbers, 30s and 40s. A warm up is on the way, but it's going to take a little while before those temperatures go back above average. Calm conditions really in the western valleys and then and to have some of that wind across a lot of the state. The good news is the wind will uh, die down here a bit tonight and tomorrow. Now, winter weather advisory again for the higher elevations around uh, the little belts, the big belts. And then also it's uh, snowing at a real good clip out there around uh, Lincoln. Lincoln is included in that winter weather advisory. Could see up to about four inches of snow uh, around the Lincoln area. McDonald Pass about ready to see some snow here with this next round going through. McDonald Pass is in, included in that winter weather advisory as is a uh, great divide here. Could see a little snow into the Elkhorns and uh, out across uh, the Boulder Mountains as well. There's some of that snow. Again, Lincoln, Helmville, out through Ovando. 
uh, Missoula reporting a little snow in the area and not much yet here, but again, out around uh, Rainsford and uh, Monarch and uh, Nyhart included in that winter weather advisory. Uh, Kings Hill Pass also could see as much as six inches of snow and we may see a little light snow, a dusting or a coating across the north central part of the state. So we've got a little snow, Mississippi and Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, also a little snow here. Uh, five snowflakes down uh, there at the end of November and people are probably uh, freaking out here just a little bit, but uh, little to no accumulation likely down there. For tonight, again, areas of snow, central and western Montana, especially in the higher terrain. Uh, the Helena Valley could see a little snow, I think better chance for some accumulation uh, east of the Helena Valley out there around Canyon Ferry, York and Nelson, maybe an inch or two. A little light snow tomorrow morning uh, here and also in the central part of the state. So a few snow showers still lingering into the morning hours. But that snow and the clouds will dissipate through the late morning and by Tuesday afternoon, we're looking at mostly sunny skies for most of the state. Tuesday night up around Glasgow, Scobie, Culbertson, Medicine Lake, there will be a little light snow opine down through Jordan Glendive. That's Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. After that, we likely will not see snow until the end of next week to uh, Wednesday, a mostly sunny day and then so on and so on. We will have a lot of sunshine. More on that in the seven day forecast. But there you can see Kings Hill Pass and then right here just along and west of the Continental Divide, a few inches of snow tonight and tomorrow. And again, a little coating of snow Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, northeast Montana. So wind, some snow showers, most of the accumulation will be up in the higher terrain. The Bear Paws, the little Rocky Mountains could see a little coating of some snow. As uh, the big snowies could see some snow, the little belts, the big belts, the Elkhorns up the divide, a little snow here tonight into tomorrow. And here's the forecast for tomorrow. Low pressure moving away. There's that second one that will bring a little light snow northeast Montana tomorrow night. Highs in the 30s with increasing sunshine through the day. Getting into Wednesday, high pressure starts to establish itself after that little morning snow in eastern Montana. Mostly sunny skies, still temperatures a little on the cool side. Thursday, as we see more of a southwest flow setting up, that's when Cut Bank and Great Falls and Lewistown, a lot of the plains will start to warm up. There will also be some wind, a little cooler conditions in the valleys of western Montana, but there will be calm conditions, not a lot of wind. And then heading into Friday, look at that, mostly sunny skies, 40s and 50s out across the prairies. 30s and 40s in the Western Valleys with some minor inversions developing. So here's Helena for the seven day forecast. You can see why I'm crying after tonight and tomorrow because it's sunshine. Ah, I'm kidding. I like the sun, but Wednesday all the way through probably next Wednesday, we will have a lot of sunshine remarkably consistent. Upper 30s to around 40, lows down well into the teens. And then for Great Falls, remarkably consistent. Temperatures in the 40s and low 50s from Thursday all the way through the weekend with a southwest wind up to 20 miles per hour. Thanks, Curtis. Coming up, the latest on professional baseball in Montana after the Pioneer League signs a new agreement with the majors. News leader, you're watching MTN News at 6. Welcome back to the News at 6. After months of uncertainty, we finally have some answers about the future of professional baseball here in Montana. According to a release from Major League Baseball, Pioneer League teams will no longer be affiliated with the big league organizations. Instead, they will become part of a new independent MLB Partner League. Under the new agreement, the MLB will provide initial funding for the league's operating expenses and installation of new scouting technology. More details will be worked out in the coming weeks, but for the Great Falls Voyagers, it is a relief to know that professional baseball is not going anywhere. Be able to make it official and let people know that professional baseball is going to be in Great Falls for the foreseeable future is certainly a relief, not just for us, but for the entire community. And to be able to pass that on is something we, we've been waiting for this day for a long time. The Pioneer League season will also be longer going forward, increasing from 76 games to 92 games. And we'll wrap things up on the News at 6 when we come back. Montana's news leader. You're watching MTN News at 6. Welcome back. Thanks for spending some time with us this evening. And that snow that Curtis mentioned in Alabama, I have friends near Helena, Alabama, spelled just like Helena, Montana, said it was snowing down there. And that does it for the News at 6. We'll be back here at 10 with your latest headlines and, of course, weather. We'll see you then. Have a great night.